Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and today we're going to go through Beyond Meat who reported earnings last week and we're going to talk about some of the positives with these earnings reports and I think some of it is going unnoticed and I think the things that was in this earnings report will be fantastic catalysts for these for this company in the next few years. So uh, if you could smash the like button, this like button weren't as smashed on the last video so uh, let's try to get that going a little bit. But yeah, we'll go through Beyond Meat, I was really impressed and I'll kind of break down what I saw with this earnings report. I might do the same for DraftKings uh, maybe tomorrow and go through their earnings report. But yeah, they, I went through the earnings report, the conference call is about an hour and a half long and I'll, I'll show you everything from there. And uh, like I said, I'll probably do DraftKings as well. Um, but yeah, first of all, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna say this on this company. There's a really good stock market book uh, out, which is by Peter Lynch, which is called One Up on Wall Street. And it's a really great book. If you uh, are in long-term investing and you trying to get your knowledge up and you've not read that book, I really recommend reading it. Um, in the book, basically what Peter Lynch goes on to say is that sometimes as just a normal investor, you can beat Wall Street quite easy because you can sometimes spot things a lot quicker than what Wall Street can and it's very easy to outperform the market. And Peter Lynch basically goes on in that book and saying, you know, you can see things that are happening and trends that are changing and you can sometimes pick up you know, 1 billion to 10 billion market cap companies, and you can see them easily come in, you know, 10, 10 baggers over the next few years. And sometimes, well, you can even do it quicker than that. Um, and, you know, it's really nice when you do get a home run really on, but, you know, trying to spot some of these opportunities in the next few years that are really going to benefit you, bef that you see before what Wall Street does. And I think Beyond Meats is exactly that. I think this is a, a stock at the moment that Wall Street are kind of not taken serious but i generally think like over the next few years that this company is going to be absolutely huge um, I, this video isn't really going into depth of like beyond meats and like why it's such a great company um i kind of made that video a few months ago i think it was three months ago so check that one out this is kind of like a bit more of an up-to-date news for you guys that are following beyond meats and uh, hopefully yeah you enjoy it um but yeah i just thought i'd say that because i think this is a a multi-bagger in the next few years that's just kind of been ignored by wall street and everything that I'm going to say about this company is what I see developing with the company in the next two to five years. Now, sometimes, you know, some of these things do happen quicker than that. But you'll, I think some of the things that we're seeing here are going to be amazing for this company in the next two to five years. Now, we're just going down through the earnings. Basically, this is two things you've got to remember with um, uh, Beyond Meat. Like, Tattoo Chef is basically for, like just on retail and frozen food in retail. Whereas Beyond Meats has the retail section for its plant-based products. So you've got the retail, which, you know, if you look, you know, retail is pretty much still normal pretty much right now. But basically the other half of the company is made up of food services. Now these food services are their food being served. There's plant-based alternatives, maybe at restaurants, um, maybe at events, maybe at sporting events. So you think about that, right? Food services, this, this here in the last kind of, this I've just dropped my pen. Um, this here in the last kind of twelve months is just been totally wiped out. You know, you as us as investors and just as individuals going down a, a high street, for example, most of the restaurants are, are pretty much closed or they're at limited running capacity. A lot of the events that would be at they're pretty much non-existent for audiences. So this here in the last kind of twelve months has been totally wiped out. And what I think that Wall Street are totally missing and a lot of investors are missing is what rebound this uh, this part of the company is gonna have in the next 24 months. And as well as the rebound and the recovery, I believe that Beyond Me are putting in place a food service part of the company that is gonna explode with some of the partnerships they're putting in place. So I think that this is suggesting, suggesting how well the company is doing and how the growth's still really good and the demand's still there. And this here is what's kind of killing the growth at the moment. I say it's killing the growth. I mean, if you think on over the course of this year, the, the growth of the company is still like 37% of revenue, which is still good to say half of your company has been wiped out. Um, so I think that when we look at this in a second, um, you'll see that I think this is in the next kind of few months. It might have a horrible next Q1, maybe a horrible Q2, but next Q3, maybe Q4 um, in, in 2021, this is going to recover strong. And I think it's going to, even go past what we were doing previously and we'll get onto that in a little bit now i'm just going to show you the numbers of what was reported through beyond meets earnings and the stock was kind of up and down uh as has it kind of went on uh, but basically if we look here you can see here 
Let's just start on the US. Retail um, grew at 76%. So we can see here, the partnerships are still growing strong in retail. The demand is still there. That growth is, is really impressive. You know, 76% growth. Um, and you know, how many companies wish they could do that amount of growth? Food services. Now you look here, you can see the decline here. 42% decline in the food service growth. But like I said, you know, we're gonna look past that in a, in a bit and talk about that. But that's the bit that was dragging the company down. You look at international, um, international, the retail, 139% growth, and that is fantastic. The growth, you know, this company was basically uh, retail mostly in the US for so many years, and it's just starting to expand into Europe, starting to expand into China, and that growth is outperforming the US side of it. 139% growth is fantastic. And once again, food services, you can see this was the little drag on the company, which was down 62%. Now, realistically, when we think about food services, what's going to happen in the next 12 months? They're going to come back. Restaurants, you know, we can we know we're near towards the end of the CV situation. We know that food services events are going to start happening again within the next six to 12 months. We know that uh, a lot of these restaurants that sell their products uh, and you know most of the, most of them being closed are at a limited capacity. They're going to recover in the next six to 12 months, and that's the thing. You know, maybe. In the next, you know, if you want to get rich quick scheme or something like that, it's not, you know, that it's this stock isn't going to kick on for the next maybe Q1, Q2. But if you're if you're a long term investor and you're looking at this and thinking, okay, you know, this next two to five years, this food service is going to come back and also it's going to grow. Now the reason why it's going to grow is that we have had a bunch of new deals announced. So this is why I mean that Wall Street is missing that this is going to recover in the next next six to twelve months and also in the next six probably 12 months, 24 months, they've announced so many new deals that are gonna start kicking in and that's gonna help that recover and also grow and that's gonna lead the revenue to grow a huge amount as well. And when the revenue grows as well, that's gonna definitely send the share price going up. So there's a lot of new deals and I'm gonna try and remember all the deals off the top of my head, but basically the big standout one was at the moment is McDonald's. So there's a, they just did confirm the partnership with McDonald's, which a few people a while ago said, McDonald's are not working with Beyond Meats, but we know that Ethan Brown came out and said we are, but we need to keep it on the down low, uh, and that's all they could say. And it kind of got, we haven't got the full details yet of how it's actually gonna work, because they wanna kind of keep it under wraps with everything, but just from a Beyond Meat point of view, having their products being sold in, I think McDonald's have about 40,000 stores right now, or maybe just slightly under that, that's gonna help sales, there's no doubt. You know, having your products sold in 40,000 McDonald's stars, you can't tell me that's not gonna help them. It's definitely gonna help them. As well as that, brand awareness. You know, your brand is basically now gonna get free advertisement and people are gonna taste your brand for the first time in 40,000 new stars. I mean, think about how many people go to McDonald's every week, every year. You know, the exposure for these guys, this is the biggest deal that Beyond Meats could have ever got in their whole company's history. You know, the deal with McDonald's and it's done it. And you think about like what that's going to achieve now for the company in the next few years as they ramp up it, um, it's going to be great. So I think that that is one, the first case of why this is going to rebound and also to go past where they were at previously. So they've got the McDonald's deal. Now there's also the expansion of Yum Brands. So Yum Brands have Taco Bell, they also have Pizza Hut, they also have KFC. Once again, think about how many chains that them guys have. Once again, brand awareness, products being tried, it's gonna be pretty good for this food food service side of it. Another deal they've announced, the Pepsi deal. Now, Ethan Brown pretty much on the conference call goes to say that it will take a while for these deals to kind of get ramped up and developed and then we'll reveal a lot more of these details out to you guys about how the deals are gonna actually work. But, you know, think about all the brands that, you know, Pepsi own and now they, Beyond Meats, have a deal with them. Beyond, that's another massive deal for Beyond Meat. So just even from them few de deals, like there's, there's even a few more than that, but just from them few deals, you can see that these food services, as soon as they recover, and also they start using these new deals into Beyond Meats, it's gonna just help brand awareness, free advertising, and also it's gonna help the revenue because these products are gonna start developing. So new deals, honestly, like I think this is what Wall Street's missing in two to five years. You can't tell me the brand awareness, the deals, the sales that they're going to increase with these partners. It's going to shoot up in revenue, hundred percent sure. Now they do go on to say a few things um, 
about how they're trying to research the products and trying to improve the products and that might hurt profitability, which is totally fine. They, all, they go and say, you know, we are still the number one player and the aim is here. And how I took it is basically, look, we could come profitable if we want to, but we're an 8 billion company. If we wanted to have profit now, what's the ceiling? A 16 billion company? You know, why, why do we want to do that? Or we can put a lot more into the company here, build up the amount of factories that we have, the amount of productions, be able to do these deals. Because let's not forget, if you're taking on a deal with McDonald's, Starbucks, uh, KFC, everything like that, you need to expand, you need to have higher production. And that means getting more and more factories and that means more and more money. Now, from, from their point of view, you know, they could reject some of these deals and they could just go, you know what, we'll go profitable, we'll make 10% revenue growth for year. Or what we can do is we can take on these deals, help the production, help the revenue growth, and then, you know, let's look in two, three, four years time. Okay, let's see what profitability we can do from here. And that totally makes sense. You know, why have a ceiling of a 16 billion company? Or why don't we try go and be a massive company out here? Why don't we try to be a 100 billion company, which is 10x from where they are at right now? And that totally makes sense from, I think as an investor, that's where I want them to go. You know, we saw something very similar with Tesla in the early days, uh, Amazon in the early days. What they kind of did is, you know, let's just sacrifice profitability. Let's grow at an insane revenue rate. Let's look at profitability down the line when we've ramped up our production and come a multi-billion company. And, and that works. And I think this is the great game plan that they have in place for Beyond Meats as well. So that is definitely going to hurt profitability, which I'm totally fine with because I'd rather them take on these deals and help revenue 100%. Now, the other thing as well is that with the amount of countries they're expanding to, you've seen the growth on the international side. They do need more and more factories. That's totally fine from that point of view. And one thing as well that Ethan Brown went on to go and say in basically this interview is that the one advantage we have with being a plant-based alternative for me is that at the moment, if we look at what products you have with meat, right? <laughs> where, where the beef comes from, it's not gonna change. You know, beef is gonna taste the same from 10 years ago to where it will be in 20 years. You can't change the taste of, of natural beef. But the thing is, is that what Beyond Meat can do is they can still carry on developing their product. They can make it healthier, they can make the taste better. And that's what they wanna focus on. We don't wanna stay on the point where we have a product and we leave it. We wanna keep making that product better and better because if you get to a point where, I've tried the Beyond uh, Meat products and I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was about on par at the moment. Now let's just say that it's not on par and it's a little bit lower still, it still has a bit of work to go. What Beyond Meat can do is if they keep putting money into this, they can still develop that product and they can get to a point where it is the same as beef, or it is a better taste, and that's a key thing. And as long as it keeps, I've just realized that's probably probably in the way. Um, the thing is as well is that if they make the products better and if they can scale up production where they're making more and more, they can cut margins and, um, you know, because they're producing more, the cost of the product comes down, which I think we all agree. I think everyone that I speak to about Beyond Meats is that everyone loves the company. But the one problem that I think everyone agrees with is that the products are a little bit expensive and a little bit more expensive than the, the beef alternatives. Now, taste, I think, is the main thing. Is I think you can say, like, if you have a product that tastes the same, um, people might be willing to pay a little bit more, you know, if they want to, you know, help the diets, the, uh, the environmental impact. I think people might be a bit more willing to pay that little bit extra for the Beyond Meat product. But the one thing that is the game changer for Beyond Meats is that if they if they have a product that's the same or even a better product and then they make it cheaper than an actual meat product, that's a game changer because then you got to the point of view of like, okay, so I can buy a product which is healthier for me, better for the planet, and I also save money. That is the game changer. And this is this is the next thing they're working on is can they get a, a product which is the same price and then cheaper? Now, Ethan Brown went on, on the conference call to say like, that's that's the five year game plan is to have a product which is cheaper than the actual meat alternative. Now, that was a five year game plan. They're about two years into that and they think they're still on track. So in three years time, 
they could actually have a product which is taste better and cheaper. And I think that's the game changer. I think uh, from that point of view, like why would someone choose the meat product over the plant-based alternative? I think that's the game changer. You know, why would someone not want a healthier product, a cheaper product and taste better? I just don't, I just can't see it. And I think that the fact that we're only kind of three years off that transaction or transition, should I say, starting to take effect, I think that's a massive, massive thing. And that's what I mean by this. I think these guys are missing, I think Wall Street are missing this. I think that this is potentially the future of the meat industry. I think this is one of the, this could be the, the big change in the meat in the meat industry in the next few years. And then I start thinking about, well, if they start taking so much market share of the meat industry, and this is an eight billion company, at what point does this start going up and up and up? And the valuation and the ceiling on this could be huge. And uh, that's what I really like. I think this could be a massive, massive company in the next few years. And when I kind of put all this through, I was kind of looking at this and thinking, this is a this is a disruptor in an industry. And I wonder um, what the how high this could go. I think this is this is a game changer. And I'm, I'm looking at this and thinking, I actually I actually uh, ended the conference call. And I was like, okay, I'm I'm really impressed. In the next two to five years, I'm really impressed where this company could go. And I was kind of at the point of like, shall I buy some more shares on Monday? And that's something I, I was actually considering. Like when you look at the price where it is at right now, I think I'd be averaging up only like 10, 10, 20%. I was like, I could buy some more. So um, that might, that's something I'm considering about, but I was definitely really impressed. The actual numbers, obviously we knew it was going to be a horrible quarter and it was on the number front, but we're thinking about what what's this company going to do when this recovers, what's this company going to do in the next two years? What's it going to do in the next five years? And I'm really, really excited by this, by this company. You know, um, I think it has a lot of potential. So yeah, hopefully that kind of gave you a little bit of information on uh, Beyond Meats and their earnings. Um, there was some really good news in there um, for a long-term investor for sure. So uh, yeah, for you Beyond Meat shareholders, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you could, smash the like button. If you are new, subscribe. If you want to know when I'm buying and selling companies, join the Patreon, the link is in the description. And if you do want to start buying some shares in Beyond Meats or other stocks, make sure you join through free trade. There's a link in the description. You join through there and you get a free share. But hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next video.